I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Michael Luckhu and Daniel Bland, co-founders of Cirrus Network and Cirrus Foundation. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Great. Thanks, Ashton. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Likewise. Ashton. It's great to work with you again. Definitely, Michael. Thank you for coming back. Uh, Daniel, great to meet you, have you on the show. I uh, would love to kick it off uh, with a little bit of information on uh, you and your team and an overview of, of Cirrus Foundation and, and some of the solutions that you're providing. Well, thanks, Ashen. And uh, actually, uh, I'm here today in uh, Reno, Nevada, and I've got a little exclusive for you. Uh, I'm here at uh, Gil Emilio's home. Gil is the former uh, CEO of Apple Computer, uh, one of the longest tenured directors at AT&T. And uh, Gil has uh, agreed to jump, join us as a senior advisor. Uh, we'll be announcing that officially on Monday. So you're getting a, a little bit of an ins inside scoop here. And uh, Gil, as you know, uh, one of the titans of Silicon Valley, uh, brings a lot of credibility to blockchain now and obviously the Cirrus Foundation. We're very, very excited about what Cirrus Foundation is all about. And you know, to sort of give you the, the very short version of what Cirrus is all about, we're all about empowering the ownership economy. And so what does that mean specifically? In our case, it means giving you, the owner of the data, uh, ownership and actual paying you for that data. Uh, the big data industry is a trillion dollar industry. It's running leaps and bounds, growing great. But what they left out, they have left out the guy who actually owns the data. And that just doesn't make sense. So our entire thesis is to change that to do that's tricky, uh, it takes a lot of work. Uh, and the most exciting part about that, we really utilize blockchain technology to do that. And, and so that's really why we come to blockchain. It's actually an organic uh, fit for what we're trying to accomplish. Definitely. Yeah. And thank you so much for that uh, intro and congratulations on that advisory position. Thank that you. sounds like yeah, a great staple. Um, yeah. And, and you're right about the privacy data management. It's been a huge topic recently, especially uh, with you know, social media and people understanding like, hey, we're, people are sort of becoming the product and they don't really own their right. own information. And right. with the help of blockchain technology, we can, we can take that back. And I was looking, exactly. into, yeah. I was looking into Cirrus Foundation and that you, your team actually has hardware uh, that, that you're using. This is not just a software product. Maybe you can touch on the hardware and, and sort of what that does and, and how that brings power back to the users. Yeah, certainly I can touch on that. And, and exactly what you said, Ashton, um, just to, to cover your note there, the last year we've seen such a big move into, into the digital era and we've left uh, you know, an informational age to a digital age where we're now utilizing everything by the form of, of, of data and digital uh, version of ourselves. So it's more important now than ever before to really empower people to connect with their data because it's not just a, uh, a value equation, it's a representation of themselves in this mm -hmm. in new landscape that we're living in. And uh, that's why with the Search Foundation, we're building the, the inroads into crypto, uh, decentralized finance, and other applications that people can take their data into. And it's a very powerful thing. This is why we really want to uh, focus on this at this point in time. Um, the hardware device is something is uh, very um, unique because there's not many crypto projects that are in the space of hardware. Um, you can look at some comparisons such as like Helium, uh, that's gained some traction, which is uh, which is fantastic, and they're they're showing real use cases. Uh, we take a hardware approach because um, it's something that actually doesn't have to change learned behavior, right? And this is really core to our thesis in the Cirrus Foundation mm -hmm. that we can do something that is most familiar to people. Uh, they don't have to re, you know, learn a new system. Uh, what we do is we actually replace a Wi-Fi router in someone's home, mm -hmm. and we can connect with them directly, and so they can have a very seamless, easy on-ramp experience uh, that allows the user to come into the system in a more frictionless way but it also connects to their high quality uh, data points around their home because we think in the industry of iot devices that's growing by leaps and bounds uh, this is high quality data that's that's inside someone's home that we're actually able to uh, connect with them with and uh, part of the hardware solution is that uh, it is part of our adoption strategy and when we think about adoption we'll talk about this i think in this, in this call here it's really really key to what we need to do in the blockchain world to form uh, adoption of crypto across the world. And uh, the part of our, our strategy is working with hardware devices, is working with major internet service providers across the world to uh, deploy these. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we're really excited about it. 
That is very exciting, and I think it's great. <clears throat> I think it's great to merge, uh, you know, that digital world and cryptocurrency, and especially people that are just getting into it. They they feel like they need to hold something in their hands, right? Um, and, and when they see it's only exactly. digital, it's they don't really understand uh, the connection. So to have that piece of hardware, I think is is great. And yeah, there aren't a lot of blockchain companies that are producing physical hardware, but the ones that are, they seem like they're they're rapidly selling out. Um, and with that, you know, your team also has to produce that hardware and get it delivered to the customers. Um, so I'm curious, is it absolutely required to take advantage of the benefits right. of, you know, data management, personal privacy uh, for Sirius Foundation to have the hardware? Or is it also possible to take advantage of it without the hardware? Well, you bring up a very good question. And um, we've worked really hard to try to solve that question and, and answer that question. And really, Cirrus is more than a hardware. Hardware is obviously a very important part of what we do, but bottom line, we are an ecosystem. We're a platform. And so we can allow for the crypto users immediately within the next very short period of time, we'll be announcing this, but they can come on and onboard onto our platform, onto the ecosystem, start earning tokens, start building uh, value. Uh, we can get you monetization for your data with just a software solution. Clearly, mm -hmm. the hardware is is the, the final piece. And when we have the IoT devices connected with the Wi-Fi router and put that in your home, it completes the entire process. But in the meantime, you can start getting onto the platform, start earning, uh, start understanding the benefits of mm -hmm. uh, data monetization. And, and uh, so, yeah, that's a big part of our strategy going forward uh, to really empower the crypto community. And a lot of times, as from an entrepreneurial standpoint, you're trying to build uh, awareness and you're trying to build adoption. And, and, and it's really important that you do that. Um, and in our case, uh, we believe that we have an entire crypto community out there that uh, understand the thesis of empowering the individual, taking away from, as I like to call them, the oligarchs. Uh, if uh, data is the new oil, then the oligarchs are the ones that are controlling all that now. And mm -hmm. we think that's flawed. And, and so this is really, uh, in our minds, uh, simpatico with Sirius Foundation's thesis, as well as someone that has adopted the cryptocurrency mantra around the world. Definitely. Well said, Daniel. And I like how you mentioned data monetization. And I know it's one thing to be able to own your data, but uh, to be able to actually create revenue generating opportunities from your own information and be the one who's yeah. benefiting from that, obviously that's going to have a huge advantages for people uh, to be able to take advantage of that. And I know that part of Sears Foundation's goals is to generate revenue generating opportunities for uh, people that have their data there ready to monetize it. Maybe you can elaborate on that and how exactly people can use Sears to generate revenue from their information. Yeah, I could say it. Um, you know, we have we have a two prong approach, making sure that uh, right from the unbox experience, you know, getting the hardware in your home, it's delivered from the internet service provider, uh, and they install and connect that in the uh, homeowner. Uh, it's it actually helps us because uh, the idea is that we don't have to change the way we instruct people how to use this product. It's actually it's it's enterprise uh, ready. Uh, the individual then unbox it, scan a QR code, and they go through an onboarding experience. And that onboarding experience means they opt in for everything. They have uh, provisions around what they want to share and what they don't want to share. Full control is is our key. And the idea is once they deploy that um, uh, device with the onboarding experience, they've now opened a crypto wallet. And so, which is really key because this is this is something that really mixes the the. Uh, bridge that we're trying to see right now in crypto, where we're in inviting the rest of the world to be a part of this digital uh, era. And by us doing that, we're inserting blockchain technology without changing people's uh, behavior, right? And so the onboarding experience is, is really key. So they earn revenue right from day one. Uh, they get paid with a uh, cryptocurrency. And so now they're inside the system of, of what we call uh, blockchain and crypto. So they can choose how they want to move that value. Mm -hmm. And that's important for us because now they can reinsert that back into the ecosystem. They can take that into network functionalities. They can take that into staking. Uh, there's a whole host of Web3 uh, and DeFi applications that we're building as a, as a entry point for people. So we think that big data is actually the big ticket. In, uh, in, in the digital era. And that's what we're leveraging because it's not just an asset that people have to make money, but it's an access for them. 
And, and that's what's really key. And I think the emerging market, this is probably one of the first digital currencies that they'll actually, uh, that they'll actually own. Um, and so it's exciting. <laughs> that is very exciting. And uh, to open the box and you know, be able to understand that you can be monetizing right away with all of these different avenues as well. Um, I know your team is early on and you're continuing to grow out uh, more services, more avenues to be able to monetize. Um, it is very exciting. And as you continue to grow, I was looking sort of at the ro roadmap. There's many different avenues in ways that you can monetize information and, and provide information to advertisers, for example, uh, to be able to uh, reap the benefits and, and not be the product. Um, maybe you can talk about, you know, out of all the ways that you're looking at building currently, but also in the future, what are you most excited for in ways that uh, people through Sears Foundation can monetize their information? Well, I think the, 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 the core is understanding that you should be being paid for your data today and you're not being paid for your data. So, so that's the, the, the biggest part of this equation is just unlocking what is already there. And, and that's significant. And so when we start with that premise, it's significant, but then we look at all kinds of other avenues that we're, um, we're building and thinking about and working on uh, uh, data NFT, for example. It's very interesting. Uh, we think NFT, you know, by and large, you know, is, is not right. <laughs> we think there's some fixes to NFT, frankly. Uh, too deep for us to get into that now. This is not really a time to do that. But uh, suffice it to say that the, the core, the core premise of re- configuring how you're paid for your data, that you actually be paid for your data using blockchain, using the Sirius Foundation platform. That's kind of the, the main thing. We'll work on other things. We'll, we're, we've got a lot of stuff right now in stealth and in the sandboxing. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's too early to talk about that because, you know, there's a lot of things, discovery that we have to do. We've been two and a half, three years just getting to this point. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, certainly <laughs> something that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep you coming back, right? Yeah, and if I can, if I can add a point to that too, I think that's a, uh, it's a well said. I mean, the idea is that data is something you should be earning from day one. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the amazing part is that we can take an emerging market and create uh, data is not just a, it's a bankable asset, right? And and when they're built on this platform that we're building out right now, as Daniel kind of alluded to, it's it, it's going to be more of an immersive experience, right? You can take that data and become a part of the investment world it's it's financial inclusion to the emerging market and that's really key and that's what we want to support great there's revenue generation but the idea is inclusion in the finance world mm -hmm. and and we can do that uh we can we can allow the the owner of that data to use how they want to insert that value into this ecosystem uh, data nft is something that we are working on it's a dynamic nft and that allows an individual to uh, move their value into other ecosystems, which I never had the ability to do uh, before. Which is a, it's a really powerful thing. But uh, I'm really excited that we actually can take someone who has never had access uh, to finance and, and and give them that, and actually include them in the rest of the world where uh, we take we just take that for uh, for granted. Yeah. Definitely, that's very excited, uh, exciting, and I will look forward to seeing how that plays out. I know your team's working on that and a bunch of other things. And one yeah. of the things that I just saw that your team uh, actually did announce, which is pretty cool, is the integration into Polygon's network, which is the fastest growing blockchain right now. Uh, so congratulations on that. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that partnership, how it's going to benefit Sears Foundation and the users. Yeah, certainly. Um, when we think about uh, technology, and this has been, you know, over a two and a half year experience right now with uh, with Sirius and the build out of, of the system, and especially with the device, we look for leaders in, in each industry uh, that we work with. They don't have to recreate the wheel. We know Ethereum is proven. It's tried, it's tested, and it's here to stay. And uh, we could see a lot of advancements in the Ethereum community. And now that the layer two solutions have come out to support scalability, it's made it a perfect fit for us. And the idea that we can remit now through the system, uh, data earnings and data revenue at micro transaction costs, micro fees, uh, it's a perfect fit. So we wanted to work with the best. Uh, we think that the Polygon team is very sharp at what they do, but they also have an ecosystem play. And the first thesis that we want to build here is a network, la network layer first. It's part of the ownership economy. So the idea is you can we can support the network layer first. We can create nodes, validators, 
uh, staking tools, and we can work with all the ecosystem uh, participants under Ethereum layer two. And so work with Polygon invites that crowd in so we can build a ground up approach, uh, the network layer first, and then the application layer that will sit on top of that, which is the data revenue uh, app. So the idea for us is, uh, is, is value at every layer and uh, why not start with one that we think is is the lead? And um, and we're excited to work with Polygon, and they've invited us. We have a lot of announcements actually coming out post launch with uh, the ecosystem players in the Ethereum layer two uh, standard. Very cool. Thanks for that, Michael. And you're mentioning, you know, we keep talking about revenue generating opportunities um, and microtransactions as well. And I'm I can only help but think that the Cirrus Network token is involved in that and we haven't really touched on it yet and I would love to uh, get you know more information for the viewers about uh, the Cirrus token is that sort of the main revenue generation transactional uh, you know um, token that's being used how else is it used in the platform and, and maybe you know a little bit about the sustainability of it in the ecosystem yeah certainly I could touch upon on that because it's a very complex uh, token economy you've built for the Cirrus token um, we looked at it from a few functions. Uh, obviously, the true utility, uh, the dynamic within the ecosystem, and the and the economy. So, what I mean by this is that the first function, so the utility token, is that every device that lives on the network uh, will require a nominal amount of Cirrus tokens. Uh, that shows that it's live to the network. It's an anti-spam type of mechanism, making sure that this is a real, uh, true homeowner. Um, we also have um, the bridge function, so we can actually bridge. Uh, individual uh, remittance into other currencies, stable currencies and, and uh, non-native assets. Uh, we also have a uh, remittance function, which I said will be a, a natural aspect because we're paying for uh, data. And the uh, the last function as well is uh, rewards, especially considering that you could be a network participant in, in supporting the infrastructure. And so mm -hmm. we really wanted to look at that. The point that I really want to make is that the demand function to the token is what's key because the more devices that we deploy, the more requirement for the for the for the token that will exist, and that will be taken either from open market or from a treasury. So, but our, our idea is to support the innovation and growth uh, to the uh, token economy by us performing, and and we have now um, you know a pretty heavy um, uh, contract in front of us that is really exciting, and we think there's going to be a lot of demand for uh, for the utility of the token. Mm -hmm. um, the the last point to the idea about this is that. The user can reinsert that value and earn higher revenue on their data in the future. So the more they participate in, you know, taking the service token and putting it back into value and being part of the network, uh, they will increase their multiple uh, from a 1.0 to 1.5 and 2.0 in the future data revenue. So they become more of a data um, uh, value data generator. And, and that's something that's part of the economy that we're building right now. It gives us more of a cutting edge um, in, in ways we can uh, bring values to the homeowner. Um, and, uh, you know, I could think we could talk about even the adoption strategy as well, because we want to have a wide circulation for the Cirrus token and make sure it's mm -hmm. adopted around the world. Um, and I think um, uh, that's part of our strategy. And I think uh, Daniel could touch on the, the adoption factor as well. Definitely. Yeah. Maybe, Daniel, you could talk about, you know, with the token uh, in the ecosystem when it's out, uh, what are some of the incentives and, and strategies that you're looking to bring on early adopters into the platform? Yeah, and that's really the core, again, of the Cirrus Foundation. Uh, we come to this from the perspective of building a big data platform. So our whole idea first comes from a straight big data platform business. So how do you do that? Well, there's a lot of ways you can do that. Uh, Snapchat's a good example. Snapchat, uh, you know, they went out public at a $40 billion valuation. They had 125 million users. Very good, very good. The negative to that is they lost $700 million. That's a big loss and great for the investor. They got their ROI out of it. But we look at it from a standpoint saying, well, we don't want to spend $700 million to build the platform. So how do we do that? So our first strategy was working with emerging markets ISPs. Why? Because you may be shocked to know that emerging markets are still very, very few network connections in those markets. So broadband connections in emerging markets is very, very small. And so in these emerging markets, ISPs are expanding very fast. We are aligning with those and contracting with those ISPs to provide large numbers of routers. In fact, we'll be announcing uh, post-launch 
significant size contracts in the millions, which will bring millions and millions of users onto our platform guaranteed, not aspirational, not if we can get them or convince them because the ISP installs the router, there's five users per home for that router. So we have five, every contract that we have, we have five users baked into our model coming into crypto for the very first time, but also coming onto the Sears platform for the very first time. So that's a hardware strategy. But beyond the hardware strategy, when we, got, when we talk about the direct onboarding onto our platform uh, with the crypto community before they get a hardware device, uh, we are designing incentive structures that will incentivize those coming onto the platform to get others to get onto the platform. Uh, listen, you cannot make an argument that every person that is online shouldn't be on the Sirius platform. Mm -hmm. it's, it's inconceivable that if you're online, you shouldn't be being paid for your internet insights. It's just automatic. That's just like, that's, a, that's a, almost a God-given right. That you, you should be doing that. And that's not happening. So our market is virtually everyone that's on the internet, which is a, which is a big market. So we want to get as many people as possible incentivized to drive adoption, get people onto our platform, both through hardware and through incentivization uh, on the uh, direct to ecosystem uh, onboarding. Definitely. Thanks for that, Daniel. And I, I do agree as well. And we don't have a lot of time left, but I want to talk about the upcoming launch. Uh, I know there's an IDO launch coming up and how more viewers can learn more about that and also about the hardware and getting involved in Sears Foundation. Yeah, I'll touch on the, um, you know, the first strategy is that uh, we're coming into market with, uh, with, with we're terming a purpose built launch. Uh, we're not just uh, picking partners and, um, you know, for no reason, we, we, we actually will be working with these uh, partners in the long term. Uh, so we are the flagship uh, project on uh, scale swap right now. And that's the Ethereum layer two IDO launchpad. Uh, we'll be working with those t the team uh, go ongoing as well on some innovation that they've created, which is uh, fantastic. Um, we also will be on uh, Zendit, uh, and they have been supporting Polygon and DeFi integrations. Uh, and then we have a major uh, news with some exchanges, um, and that's all aligns with what we want to do uh, to support um, a purpose-built launch. And so that's coming up in the next week. Uh, the main point is that um, this is a long-term approach for us, and everybody we try to work with uh, is, is a part of that uh, journey. Um, the aspects that we have coming up in the next six months um, are... That once we get to market, we'll be opening up our first early access uh, for the CRS platform at which you can come in and you can be a, an early participant um, that will allow you to uh, earn CRS tokens and uh, be part of the testing trial of data monetization right from a web client that will actually bolt onto the system and the platform. And the more you do that, the, the ability for you to even just earn a device for free uh, is something that we're working on and that'll get stripped right to your home. Uh, like Daniel said, our major focus is working with a enterprise go-to-market strategy, which is ISPs first, because that's how we build in millions of people into the system. But we'll be opening up a direct-to-consumer line uh, later part of this year um, that will allow anybody around the world to be invited to work with us. And that will be a premium device that will be able to mine the uh, blockchain as well, which is super cool. It's uh, comparison um, to, to Helium. And we think that uh, probably even a bit better because we have a real uh, revenue model, which is data that's tied on top of it. Um, so it will allow a premium version and direct to consumer line to, to access that uh, that unit. And uh, we're we're kind of targeting, um, uh, you know, really uh, multiple approaches. So that's really what's in store in the next six months and uh, super excited. So very exciting. Thank you so much, Michael and Daniel as well for all the great information. Of course. I, I will leave those links. Uh, for Sears Foundation, uh, the upcoming launch, all in the description box below as well for the viewers. All the best with the launch and all of these ma amazing updates coming in the coming months. And let's follow up in the near future. Great, Thanks Ashton. So much, Thank Ashton. you so much. Really appreciate your time.